Hey guys, we're here today with a very dangerous man, the Ken Shamrock. Ken, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing very well, thank you. Are you liking your time here in the Quad Cities? Well, I've been here about two hours now. Went and got some steak, had some great food, some chili, and so far it has been wonderful. So I'm looking forward to the next couple days too. So, so far it's been great. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Nice to have you here. What are, what, are you, what are you in town for? What are you here? Well, they have some fights going on. And, you know, I have a little reputation when it comes to fights. And uh, so anytime I get an opportunity to come and check out some fights, help support some of the young fighters coming up all around the world, um, I like to do that. I like to come in and check it out, see some of the young fighters, maybe even some of the guys that might even be pushing up there towards being in the big show. But uh, have an opportunity to come and watch that, support the show, um, and, uh, you know, check out some of the young bloods coming up. When promoters Chris Maltzberger and Mike Smith asked you to make an appearance here in the Quad Cities at the Fight Legends of the Quad Cities, what was your first thoughts? What was going through your head during the time? Well, when they called me um, and they told me a little bit about what they were doing up here, um, you know, they were coming together and they're trying to put one big show together. <clears throat> and then, you know, trying to figure out how they can get the Quad Cities for everybody to help support each other and, and, and because it's only going to benefit the fighters. Um, and try and get promoters to come together and all work together and try and do the best show they possibly can. And when they came in with this idea of them two getting together and putting the show on, um, first thing in my mind I thought, well, you know, wow, that's great. You know, two guys getting together, looking out for the best of the sport, not necessarily for themselves, but how they can improve the sport by them coming together, joining their, their leagues together, bringing in both of their fighters from both sides, and putting on the best show that they could possibly put on for MMA world and for the fans and for the fighters and so when I when, when I heard the concept and what they were doing I was like you know I'd like to be a part of that and I see if I can help them out. It is fantastic that people like you still still do everything you can to keep it where it's at. Well I think that we have to remember this um, in boxing and, and other sports as we've seen um, throughout the years <clears throat> is if we don't tend it and if we don't take care of it and we don't nurture it it will go south quick. So I think it's important, guys like myself, uh, promoters, and even other fighters, that we police our business and making sure that it's going in the direction that it needs to go so it stays respectful. That's good. So why don't you tell me about the Lions Den? I've heard a lot of talk about that. Uh, is there any new and upcoming fighters coming out of there that we should know about? Give us a little background on that. Yeah, you know, Lion's Den was something I developed probably back in um, 1991. Um, I was over in Japan. I was fighting over there. But back in 91, as we all know, <clears throat> 89, 90, 91 is when I was going over to Japan, was that there was really, I mean, you never saw a boxer or a kickboxer go to the ground. In, that, in the gym, right? So it was a stand-up or the ground, and you never saw the mix. So when I was going over to Japan to fight, um, when I came back back to the States, I had nowhere to train. Because it just, you couldn't find that training. So basically what I did was I developed a system where I'd bring guys in and I'd put them through some tryouts, and then I started training these guys, right? Just so that I had guys to train with. So I started training these guys and they got better and better and I was able to get better training because then I had ground fighting and stand up fighting put together <clears throat> and I was sitting down I was watching TV one afternoon and I saw this <clears throat> lion and they were talking about the pride and how it would encircle its prey and run them into the pack. One, one of them would run them into the pack and they'd jump them and they'd kill them. <clears throat> kill them, that's a strong word. <laughs> but the way that they they would grab and pull them down almost like into the guard, right? And it was just, I mean, it was just so beautiful. And I'm not talking about the killing part of it, but just the, the mechanics of it and how it worked. And I watched that and I go, man, that is just, I mean, that's like, that's like the grappling we do, you know, where you're pulling down and you're putting them in a position where you want them. And then I said, you know, that'd be a great name. Lion's Den, King of the Jungle. And so it just kind of stuck. And so that's how I started developing basically the Lion's Den. Um, you know, basically to train fighters to help me train over in Japan because they didn't have anything here like that. But then as I started doing that, the fighters started getting good and then they started fighting. And then, 
you know, as the legend has it, you know, some of the lions in tryouts is some of the ones that people still talk about today as being one of the most brutal tryouts that anybody's ever had to go through. Uh. So it's it's definitely got its reputation and it's deserved because we had seven world champions um, in the UFC. Gosh, that's incredible. That's a feat. Is there is there any other gyms that have quite that many champions? Yeah, you know, I think that Militech, shortly after the Lions had basically dominated the UFC for quite some time, uh, Militech came in right behind that and basically started dominating the UFC. So. Uh, it's been really good. You watch the sport develop in so many different ways. You know, like when strikers went in there and they were getting beat up, they started learning that they had to be able to stand back up again to get more shots at knocking people out. So they learned to do that. They, they evolved. Now the grapplers were getting knocked out, right? Yeah. Because now the strikers were learning how to stand back up again. So now the, the grapplers were taking them down and they were standing back up again. And they're like, well, I can't keep them down. So they started getting knocked out. Well, then the grapplers go, wow, you know what? I gotta start evolving, man. I gotta learn how to strike so I can set up my takedowns and they become a lot easier if I'm punching him and taking him down. And they developed and they evolved. Same thing with like the fight teams where the Lions didn't came in and we developed a strong fighting team. And then other people around started seeing how much an advantage it was to have a team around you to be able to help you train and be able to get you ready for fights and at the same time have other guys that were fighting that were doing very well and built this reputation. Well, and then I, Militic came up with the, you know, Militic fighting system in which, as everybody knows, uh, this day is probably one of the most popular fighting systems in the world. Correct. And he was able to evolve that even to another level. So it's been awesome to watch in so many different directions that MMA has evolved. And it still continues to evolve today, right in front of us. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the Shamrock Boys Foundation, a little bit about it and what it means to you. Well, um, my history, and, and I've spoken about it many, many times, was um, at a young age, um, I was uh, involved with um, strong arm robbery. Um, I got stabbed, um, and I went into placement um, at about 10 years old. And I failed several placements and in and out of group homes and work camps and uh, foster care. And it just, you know, I went through that stage where it just, I felt like, you know, no one was there for me, so I'm going to take what's mine and I started going down the wrong path. And I came across a guy named Bob Shamrock. Um, and uh, when I first got to him, obviously I didn't trust him because I really, in this system that you go through so many times, you get lied to so many times and you just don't trust people who are in those positions because you know they think they're just there to pacify you they're really not trying to help you well he took the time to show me a direction and learn how to funnel my anger and my disappointments and my hurt and all the scars that i had on the inside showed me how to direct that into something positive that anger that i had showed me how i could funnel that into something positive which was sports for me and he took time and showed me the right way to do things. He showed me the positive things that I can have out of being angry and turn into something positive. And so once I started learning to do that, my life started to really evolve and I started to become an individual and I, I became a person. Um, I could see my personality and I could see the direction that I had possibilities of going. And my life started like blossoming, like I, I had options and opportunities only because this man stopped and gave me a chance. Now, with this um, troubled youth home, boys and girls home that, that now that I'm involved in and I have other partners that are with me involved in that, is that I, I have been blessed throughout my career to be a world champion in Japan, here in the States, obviously with WWF. Um, a lot of opportunities that I had throughout my career where I've been successful and none of that would have been possible without Bob Shamrock going, hey, this kid's special, he deserves a shot at life, and I'm gonna show him how to do that. Well, now I have that opportunity, right? I've done all that stuff, and I've been blessed. And now I have that same opportunity to go, you know what? I've been taken to a spot because someone took time to do that for me. Now it's my turn to do that for other kids. And so that's kind of why we came up with this. I, I felt like it's time. You know, I've done everything that, that I've wanted to do, and I've been blessed doing it. 
and you know with the fame and, and, and the structure and all the things that I've developed over my career I can now take that and use that as tools to help other troubled kids. That's good. It's very good that you learn from that and you, you, you're applying it now. I mean, that's incredible. And we'd all do that more in life, you know. If you, every athlete in the world, whether it's football, whatever sport it's in, or even acting, singing, whatever it is, if you would just go back to your own neighborhood with everybody that's ever made some success in their life and give a little bit back, how different the world would be. Well, there you guys have it, Mr. Shamrock's uh, idea of the world peace. It could work. I'm telling you, man. It could work. All right. Uh, I don't know if you know this yet, but uh, Mr. Dan Severin will be at the same show with you this Saturday. If I remember correctly, you guys are, you fought before, you're one and one. Do you think uh, you would ever someday maybe have a, a grudge match to settle it out, uh, see who's going to be the bigger, better fighter? Who's going to be the... Well, I know who the bigger and better fighter is. It's me. Just ask me. But, I mean, if me and Dan Severn get in the same room and he mouths off, you never know what might happen that night. Wonderful. We'll have the cameras rolling that night in case uh, anything does get to happen. He won't knock the fat off him. <laughs> Last of all, we would all like to thank you for coming here to the Quad Cities. You have a lot of fans here. A lot of hubbub has been going around on the Twitter, the Facebook. Everybody is so excited to see you. Is there anything that you would like to say to all your fans here in the Quad Cities? Well, I mean, and Quad Cities, obviously, because I'm here, but, you know, all over the world. Um, I've been blessed to be able to do something that I love to do for my career and be able to have success at it and be able to win and be a champion at it and be able to stay on top for as long as I have. But I, I've always wanted to make sure that the fans understand that the role that they played in over the years, that without the fans, this could never be possible. Never be possible. And sometimes I think... The fans are definitely underrated a lot because times that we were going through where we were being pushed out because they said it was too violent and they wouldn't let us have it on the, on the regular uh, grounds. We had to be on the Indian Reservation and then times where they were taking it off the pay-per-view and they wouldn't let that happen. And the fans, through the Internet and through different sites, kept it alive. I mean, they made sure that they were faithful for wherever the events were being happening somewhere in their neighborhood that they supported it and even today when i go to some of these shows where a lot of these young fighters are coming up and i see so many fans out there supporting these young fighters coming out and fighting and man i just want to make sure that they truly understand the role that they played in with the mma being at where it's at today that they are the reason that we're able to go in and fight and make the money that we make because of their strong support and their undying love for the sport and they were not going to take no for an answer and they were going to keep this sport alive and they knew it was the legitimate deal and they knew that this is what people wanted to see and they loved it and they weren't going to let politics get in the way and run it out. So for that, I just want to thank the fans, and, and, and I, like I said, I always want to make sure that they truly understand that the role they played into making MMA possible. Well, there you guys have it. Mr. Shamrock, it has been an honor to even be in the same room as you. Someone yeah. like you, you got a good head on your shoulders, you're giving back. We really appreciate everything that you've done, and uh, I hope the Quad Cities is ready for you. I know we are. Well, <clears throat> if they're not... Yeah, they better be because we're here. There you <laughs> Thank you guys very much. It's been a pleasure. Take care, Mr. Shim. All right, man.